Hello students. Today we will take up the new chapter from human physiology that is chemical coordination and integration chapter 22 from 11th standard biology. Basically in control and coordination we have two systems which functions uh, in control and coordination. Which are the two systems? They are nervous system which can be called as neural control and coordination and second is the chemical coordination and here chemical coordination comes that means the glands okay so the glands which are secreting the chemicals basically in this chapter we are going to talk about endocrine glands because these are the glands which secretes hormones okay so these hormones are how they are essential for us how they are classified how glands are classified all that thing we are going to learn in this chapter in detail if i'm talking about neural control and coordination that is the previous chapter in 11th standard biology wherein uh, we have seen there is signal transmission whereas in this chemical coordination and integration chapters we say there is chemical transmission that is hormones are transmitted from one part to another part or from one gland to the target organs wherever it is necessary there the hormones will be secreted so that is the about the chemical coordination and integration so when we talk about glands glandular system that will come under chemical coordination and control in detail if i want to tell you as i told you there is endocrine gland or there are endocrine glands which we are going to learn in this chapter but before we actually start with the endocrine glands let me tell you all the classification of glands how glands are classified actually there are two types of glands so the glands if i am talking glands are classified into one is exocrine gland and the other one is endocrine gland. So exocrine and endocrine. But whatever I am talking about till now is about the endocrine gland. But let me brief you all with the exocrine gland also. There are exocrine and endocrine glands both are present in our body. What are these exocrine glands? These are the glands we say they are special, they are secreting on the surface. So whenever they want to secrete something, glands meaning obviously they are going to secrete. Whenever they are secreting, they are secreting on the surface or in the surface. That is exocrine glands. Okay, now if I want to give you an example of exocrine gland, let me draw a diagram of a stomach. Now imagine this is a stomach. Now this stomach will be having the inner lining. And we say that inner lining is having the glandular cells. Okay. Now imagine this is a gland. Now this gland or if I want to draw in this manner. I will draw like this. So that it will be easy for you all to understand. Okay, now these are the glandular cells if I want to talk. Now these glandular cells, for example, these are the glandular cells. If I want to, this will be again. If I want to maximize this, it will be somewhat like this. Right? If this want, I want to amplify it. Okay, magnify it, then this will be looking like this. Now these exocrine glands will be having the cells. These cells will be secreting something. Obviously, the chemicals will be secreted. And if I am talking about the stomach inner lining, then stomach inner lining will be secreting either the HCL gas or the enzymes like pepsinogen. Everyone knows this, right? So, these gland secretions will be passing if it is going inside. It has to come here now. So, how it will be passing? It will be passing via this canal-like thing. So, this is a canal wherein there are no cells. Okay, so these are called as ducts. So whatever secretions are there by, the, by these exocrine cells, these secretions will be coming into the stomach via these ducts. That's why exocrine glands are always, we say, they are present with duct. So secretions are transferred from duct to the surface, on the surface, wherever it is. But it is having duct. 
to secrete okay or duct through the duct the secretions will be coming out if i'm talking about endocrine gland these endocrine glands we say they are a ductless glands now why they are ductless gland normally what happens imagine uh, there is a adrenal gland okay now this is a adrenal gland this adrenal glands will be having the cells which will be secreting the hormones okay the chemicals that are called as hormones specially now these hormones they do not have any ducts to pass okay on this adrenal gland there will be artery there will be capillary there will be veins so blood supply will be there so whatever is there whatever secretions are there that will be passing by the capillaries the blood vessels so as a result they don't have any duct to pass that's why we say that endocrine glands are also referred as ductless gland so this is the basic difference between exocrine gland and endocrine gland exocrine glands are always with duct and endocrine glands are ductless glands the secretions of exocrine gland if i want to give you example a sweat gland is secreting the sweat it's a duct it is having the duct that's why it's an exocrine gland our salivary gland is also being secreted by a duct so it is an exocrine gland then this gland also i told you gastric glands we say okay but in this chapter we are going to talk about endocrine glands the endocrine glands are secreting hormones especially the hormones okay whereas here it can be saliva it can be enzymes all these things are about the exocrine glands but basically in this chapter we are going to classify different types of endocrine gland so the next topic which i'm going to tell you is about the endocrine gland if i'm talking about human endocrine glands or human endocrine system we have different types of endocrine glands such as hypothalamus pituitary adrenal pancreas if i'm talking about in males they are testes in females it is ovary as a endocrine gland okay all these glands we are going to learn in detail i'll show you the picture on powerpoint presentation how the gland looks actually and then we'll talk about the individual glands okay students you can see the picture over here showing all the glands so that makes the human endocrine system as i told you it has hypothalamus which is present in the brain then pituitary also in the brain then thyroid somewhat somewhat present over here okay parathyroid just beneath that then there is thymus gland pancreas gland everyone is familiar with that adrenal gland which is on the top of the kidney and if we talk about in case of females they have females have ovary as an endocrine gland and males has a testes as endocrine gland so these all glands make the human endocrine system and when this glands are functioning properly we know that our organs are coordinated our organs are um functioning in proper manner so this is about the human endocrine system i was talking about okay so basically let me quickly revise about the chemical integrate coordination and integration chapter i told you that there are basically two types of control system in us neural control system and chemical control system neural control system is related with the nervous system and chemical coordination is with the endocrine glands so to talk about endocrine glands first i told you what are exocrine glands they are the uh, glands which are having duct so through duct the secretions are taking place whereas endocrine glands you can see the slide over here endocrine glands are the duct less glands they don't have any duct the secretions are directly being thrown or secretions are being directly secreted and they goes to the target organs via the blood circulation so they secrete hormones and this glands are secreting the chemicals these chemicals are known as hormones what are hormones they are actually the chemicals in simple words if i want to tell you and uh, the definition if i want to talk you uh, tell you about the hormones they are non nutritious you can see they are non nutrient chemical that doesn't give any nourishment that's why they are non nutrient chemicals which act as a intercellular messenger so within the cells they transmit the signals they communicate within the cell so that is the why they are called as intercellular in between the cells the communication takes place so intercellular messengers and they are always producing trace amounts not like little amount they are always producing trace amounts 
so this is about the introduction of this particular chapter in the next video i'm going to tell you about the glands in detail thank you everyone